<laughs> yes, guys. How is everyone? Finally, after years of waiting, whatever it's been, a few weeks. Finally, Daniel Fart is the new head coach of Leeds United. Or the new first team manager, according to the website. Let's just have a look at it quick before we get into who is the man? Who is it? Who is it? And what will he bring to Leeds? Before we get into that, let's just look at the article. Let's go. So, yeah, as you can see at the top, it's a four year deal. Obviously, there's, there'd have been some discussions there showing a bit of uh, longevity in the appointment. Saying that, that suggests to me that they're going to back him. Four year deal, and there's some quotes down here. Let's just talk about them real quick. I feel humble at this time. I know the responsibility to fulfill the expectations, and I want to replay the trust shown. The important thing is to create togetherness. We'll get into that. And utility within this club again from today onwards. I will work on it with my staff and players, and I trust our supporters will be there when we need them, of course. I can't wait for the first game of the season. And then Parag has spoken. Um, after a tough recruitment process, I'm excited to confirm Daniel's appointment as our first team manager. His record in the championship is clear, and I am impressed by all his leadership and his plan to guide us back to the Premier League. We welcome Daniel and his staff to the club, and we look forward to a strong season. And he said here he will be assisted by Eddie Reimer, Christopher Johns, and Chris Domagala, who I've got a little slide on in a minute. We'll get into that. Obviously, they worked together for a while. Let's get into who he is right now. Let's go. Yeah, I've done a, I've done a lot of uh, research on him, um, as much as is humanly possible for a one person. Um, honestly, I've looked at loads of interviews and everything. Let's get into it. His style and beliefs is what that says under my face. So the three things he said in an interview um, was hard work, honesty, and joy. So enjoyment. Hard work. And this, is, this goes to on the field and off it, you know. <laughs> He will, obviously, in a playing style, he wants his players to work hard. They will train extremely hard. But also, it's, it's got to be about the club, right? They've got to understand, he said, the, the situation they're in, the privilege they have. They have to work hard every day to impress the fans, to, to give everything in every way to the club. That is a big thing for him. Like we wrote, wrote about in the statement, you know, it's a huge thing for him. Honesty. He doesn't like BS. He'll be honest. The players need to be honest. His staff will be honest to him. He wants a connection together. He wants everyone to be honest and on the same page. 100% agreement. If the player is not right, they won't be there. He needs everyone together. And Joy, he said it's football. You have to enjoy it. You have to enjoy these experiences. You know, it's a short career. You're in a privileged position. Do the hard work and out of that, you will get enjoyment. And those are three key char characteristics which he stated. He always loves to evolve and adapt. These are things he said in previous, you know, interviews and on 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 magazines and in quotes and stuff like that. He always likes to evolve and adapt. Okay, as we know, if something's not going right, he will change it. He has his core principles, but he will change if he has to. He doesn't believe coaches should be the same forever. You know, they should always be adapting and changing the way they play to adapt themselves as humans as well. You know, for the times or for the type of player you have. This is what a quote he said: "What separates good teams from champions." is you are able to dominate a game. So this is going into his possession. He also stated he would love 100% possession in the game. He loves to have the ball. He loves to dominate the ball and dominate areas of the pitch with the ball. Starting from the back, going through the thirds into attack. He will create overloads and dominate areas of the pitch to go forward. I think we'll really enjoy that. And these are of a mix and match of things he says. Dominate the ball, be good in possession active not reactive so know exactly where everyone is at each time be flexible in formation with core principles these are his core flings like i saying about, about his formation i've always said this it, it's very adaptable it's a 4 2 3 one whatever you want to call it but realistically it's always moving everyone is always moving it's a different shape it will sit it will go with a two up top depending on what press they're doing or how they're sitting defensively he's very adaptable he'll play five at the back where he'll push the cdm into the back and push a full back forward he will switch a lot. He's very, very reactive. Be flexible in formation. That's core principles. That's like I said. My side should always play attractive football with many combinations. These are the style and beliefs. Who are his guys? Who are the guys with him? These guys right here. These are the three main guys who have been with him almost since day one. Edmund Reimer. It's what he stated. He's a good talker with the players. Worked together since the start. I think he signed him at Lipstad. He signed him there. 
and I think they may have played together, I'm not 100% on that, but he definitely signed him at Lipstad when um, Bach was director of football. And he also stated uh, Edward Reimer, Edmund, not Edward, he's the hands on the training pitch. So he's the guy that's in and around the training with Bach. You know, they will be working together as a team to motivate and get the best out of the players. He's a very good man management coach. We'll get on with the players, we'll talk to the players, we'll try and get any bit of information from the players during training. Christopher Jons, it is Jons, I think that's how he said it, but Christopher John, if we're saying it in English, is his second assistant, he's the analyst. He's his eyes, he stared, his eyes at the training pitch. He's got the hands over there and he's the eyes. He will overlook the footage of every training, every game, and his job is to tactically look through the games and try and understand how we can improve the team, how we can get the best out of more players, all that fun stuff. He's like the analyst coach. He works with the higher, higher, more like looking over everything, overseeing when they'll work together with the footage and review the footage and talk through there. They're very close knit. He's also been with him since the start. And both of these coaches have followed him all the way through his entire career. They're very loyal to him and they're a great team and they're all on the same page. And then we've got Chris Domagala, this little beast down here. <laughs> Fitness coach, athletic coach. Works with the medical staff, works with fitness. He's the overseer of everything. He will be putting them through their paces preseason. Best believe he will be battering them. They will be battered. Chris has been with the other guys, I think, since Dortmund. So not, not since playing days, but been there for a while still. And he's been with him since then at every job. A really good core group. And they're all on the same page. They all believe in each other. And they all get results together. That's their aim. They're all together in this. Like we saw Bielsa and his kind of disciples. It's that similar energy. You know, players that, coaches that believe in Fak and that he believes in them. So they're the guys behind him. They're the core of the group. There'll be others, obviously, but they're the three main ones right there. And I can't wait for them to work at Leeds. So positives of the overall thing. So why Daniel Fark is good for Leeds? Simple. He's known and he's won the league. He's done it twice. In three seasons. First season was difficult for him. You know, it was a lot of, it is what he said, there was a lot of old players, a lot of losing mentality in the side. So he had to change that. But having done that, he's built two sides, you could argue, that have been extremely successful in the championship. Now, of course, this is a big fish at Leeds, respectfully, in terms of what we want to achieve in terms of goals as a team done it he's proven the formula works if he is backed in recruitment which is absolutely vital because he has very specific player traits he needs in each position that is vital by the way i can't stress that enough if he is backed he will dominate have to back him have to he stated this premier league is the best but the championship is the toughest i've learned about mental strength experience he's learned how to adapt to this league he knows how to this league works now, right? He knows how this league works. He's been there. He's done it. He understands what is required. He understands what type of players he needs. He understands the squad size he needs. He knows this now. This is what he said. I like to prepare myself. Watch every game. I know all the players and how they play. Best believe he knows exactly who he wants and who he doesn't. There's a reason they're showing Ruta. I believe, and this might change when he sees him in training. He might not be impressed. But right now, from what he's seen, he will have watched footage. He's, you know, he knows him from Germany, potentially. He might know him scouting from there. I think he believes in Roy, and I think we'll see him play a lot. I think there's other players he said he's happy to let go, who we will replace with his type of players. But he, he's watched everything. He knows exactly this team, I promise you. He knows the players. He knows them a lot. He's done his due diligence for weeks. He will have been looking at every aspect with his coaches. They've all been out of a job, so they will have been working together. So they're the core positives. They can't be stressed enough. Worries. Now, this is my worries. These are what I've seen worries, and I'm trying to. I'm going to answer them. I'm going to try and decipher some of them. Two relegations. Now, of course, that's not great on your CV. Clearly, especially uh, the one, the second one. I think it was where they were terrible, right? But I've got to talk about the squad and investment. Now, what happened when he went to the Premier League? And I looked earlier at the formations. When he went up the first time, they spent about five to eight million pounds. Now, straight up, that is never going to keep you in the Premier League. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous. You cannot expect it. I don't think they did. You know, that's how they rolled that top 26 vibe they had going on, right? So I don't think they expected it. They didn't bring the players he wanted, clearly, were not good enough. 
So that one. The second one is, yeah, right. So again, they went up. They spent six million, but they sold Emi Buendia, who was by far their best player. Now you've ripped out your best player and you replaced them. You put three or four players in with that money who just weren't good enough or didn't work in the system. It won't work. And you look at the players he brought in then and look at them now. They're not playing at great levels. So the recruitment in that second season in the Premier League didn't work. It's quite simple. And they never really recovered from that. You know, until now, maybe the might have changed these days, but it's a difficult situation to understand. I think a lot of it has to go on the recruitment speaking you have with the, the director of football or the person in charge to get the right players. I don't know if they did. I don't know if they had the funds to buy upper echelon players. I don't know. But it didn't work. Christian Gladblatt was okay. True. It was okay. It didn't pull up trees. He did fine. But again, now this is important. Was he backed? They sold some of their best players midway through, I believe, from what I've been told. You could probably look online. I don't think he was backed enough. Needs, that I spelt too wrong, needs to be backed with the right players. I, I can repeat this as many times as possible. Now, the, the, this is a big one here. Could require patience. And I want to show you why real quick. Now, just look, quickly looking at his first season at Norwich, where they finished 14th, I believe. As you can see, results are very mixed. This was not a squad who was ready to compete at the top level in the championship. There was a lot of old players in there. There was a lot of players who didn't fit his system. There was a lot of players they had to sell, top players. I think one was Madison, for example. So this was more of a building of project year. Now, if we look at the year after where they won the league, the 18-19 season, we look at that. Now, what is interesting about this is the way they started. They won the league, by the way. But if you look at that start, it's not great, right? They drew, then they lost, then they won in the cup. So in the league, they, they drew, lost, lost, 1-2-0, then lost to a 3-0. I remember that. Not a great start. And I believe he was under pressure at this point, his job. So this is what I mean for the need for patience. Now, you look after these results, and it's win after win. Two-game wobble there. But it's greens on greens. Very little losses. And then look at this run here. Didn't lose in since February. Three months. Phenomenal run. And then we'll get him, we'll, we'll come to we'll come to the last season. So this is the second season in the championship, which they dominated and we've got ninety seven points in. This is it right here. And look at the start again. Forget get the cup. So they won 1-0, they drew, lost, lost. Not a great start. Maybe this is something we have to prepare for. I know that sounds, we might have to be patient. We might have to wait five, six, seven, eight games. And I know, I put that in worries because I don't know if the fans can, but we might have to because it might take a while to get all this turnover right, to get the right players in to then understand the system. That could take months. But after that spell, of winning one in five in the first five games of the season. Look at the run they went on then. Unbelievable. Hardly any losses. You know, four games without a win there was a bit of a worry, but then look after that. Winning everything. 7-0. So that's my, that's my thing about we might have to be patient. I just want to clarify that. I talked about Burnley and look at their first season in the Championship last year to contrast that. In the first five, they won one and drew three and lost one. So they didn't start great either. The team that starts great in the Championship doesn't always win the league. It's all about getting the players to understand the system. That might take a while. It clearly did for Burnley and it clearly does for Fax. So don't expect batterings at the start of every season. Don't expect it because it might not happen. I'm prepared for that now. I'm all right with that. As long as I see where it can be good and where it was going, I'm all right. But we might have to be patient. It's a long, long season. We might have to be patient. So that's that's Daniel Fark. I can't wait to see him. Now I want to see transfer links. I want to see players in. There's a video coming up very soon on this channel. And I've been working for three days on it. Recruitment video about which player will play in the 10 for Leeds. That attacking midfielder. A vital role in the, in the Fark system. Who will that be? I've gone through all so much looking online everything videos stats all online right loads of it 
try and find five players in that number 10 who I think would fit Fark's system perfectly, who are also gettable. So let me know. So that's coming, but yeah. So let me know what you guys think about Fark. I am buzzing with this. I can't wait. Please like the video because it's a good day, right? Subscribe if, if you don't mind. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for this. It's finally started. We're here. We're ready to go. Let's just get on with it now. Let's let's get on with the season. I can't wait. But yeah, appreciate everyone's support. Peace.